Welcome or welcome back to Make It Modern. That was actually a terrifying entrance because we do have a squishy floor underneath our art room. If you are new here, we do affordable and realistic DIYs. Today is actually going to be fixing our mistakes from a former art room video. It was a lot of fun, um, but we do have minor issues that we need to address and kind of make this room a little bit more usable and functional for our needs. If you like that sort of thing, stay tuned for more. So as Hannah said in the intro, we do have some issues with our art room. Right now we have what we call squishy floor. There's some issues with the subfloor that I thought that I tackled, but apparently not. So in today's video, we are going to take everything apart. So we're going to completely undo that last video that we did and see what kind of damage we have underneath the floors. So without further ado, let's get into the video. There is a whole lot of work that we have never tackled before, but the only way to start is to uh, start. One other fun little quirk, if you will, of this art room is this here monstrosity of a door. A few months ago, I did decide that I wanted to paint a mural on it, so I did go ahead and just wipe it off just a little bit, and all of the paint came off. So unfortunately, we are unable to replace this door as it is a custom-sized door, and we don't really feel like spending $800 on a custom door, so we are going to give this a little bit of love, sand it down, give it a good primer for exterior, and give it um, a new paint of coat, a coat of paint, coat of arms. <laughs> This rug has got to go. It's gotta go. Ah! At least it was easy to clean out. Oh my god, I'm gonna fall through the floor. So now comes the fun part where we get to take off all of the baseboards. So we just have our standard crowbar, soft blow mallet, and in order to protect your walls, it's always a good idea to have something flat. That way you're not punching any holes in the drywall. But since these are very specific pieces, we are going to try our very best to take good care of these and make sure that we don't break them. Because one, these are expensive, and two, these floors are out of stock, so we don't know what else might be out of stock. We can order more. <laughs> we can't. spoiled our dogs are. Look, I think they're gonna be getting some sandwich. This is the most uh, well-behaved he's ever been though. Go watch this. Get a life, come on. That's the only trick they know. <laughs> oh, there we go. We got the first one out. No damage, which is good. Um, we're going to label these as A, B, C, one, two, three. Luckily, all the water damage that we have down here, the membrane that they have underneath, totally protected them. So we'll definitely be able to use these, which is a good start to our project. Look at that. Well, we found uh, what happened. P3. P3. Dad had a girlfriend named P3. What? Well, her was name she a was. Robot? There we are. So we've taken out about half of the floor, and we have some joists there, but really it's just sitting on dirt. So we're gonna see if we can find a way to get some ventilation in there, maybe dry it out a little bit. This is the outside of the room, and we actually might have found what was going on. Every single day at around six o'clock or so, irrigation system would turn on. It went back there and there are a few leaks. Hopefully if we cut it right about there, that way it doesn't go anywhere near there, that will solve our water issue. So I'm just going to take this cap off, cut it down over there, and we will hopefully get this issue resolved. It is the next morning and just our luck it rained last night. There's actually no water damage, which is good. So that means that it is nice and waterproof, at least from water coming in from the outside, but not from up underground. That's how we got into this situation in the first place. So if you guys ever want to know how you could spend an entire two days, the answer is take out some floors, like all the way out. <laughs> we did go to Lowe's and pick up some OSB, so it's a lot more durable. Uh, it's supposed to be a little bit more weather resistant and so we're just going to make sure that all of these joists are supported we're going to get some shims because again like i said we don't want any squeaky floors once we're all done here this whole room can fit probably about two full sheets and then we'll have to make a cut right here 
Arlo's not excited for the loud noises. Show everybody your smile. Smile. And I got the subfloor in and it looks great. We only had to ask nicely a couple times. Now it's just time to use some deck screws to make sure that these are firmly secured to the joist. We did mark where the joists are so it'll make putting these into uh, the studs very easy. One, two. Instagram plug. Make it modern. So we haven't talked about our flooring choice yet in this video. We did in the original art room video, but this is actually SmartCore Ultra LVP, so luxury vinyl planking. And the style that we went through, just in case anybody is curious, is <laughs> Chaparral Oak. They're very water resistant. They have this really cool membrane down on the bottom and they actually click into place and all you do is slide in and then you get it locked in coming this way. And there you go, just rinse and repeat a couple times and you'll have your flooring in in no time. So our solution to get rid of any future moisture is we're going to put this vent in the floor right around in the middle there. So when we get to this area, we're actually going to cut out piece of the subfloor and place it right there. And we're installing a gutter. A gutter on the outside to make sure that rain stays away. So I think a lot of the issue, since this is sloped, rain was coming here, falling straight down. That's where a lot of the moisture, I think, has been coming in. We're making good progress. So far, this is day two, coming up on the end of it. Hey, the squishy floor is gone, which is exactly what we were trying to accomplish. And we even put in a new vent. We still have quite a bit to do. Tomorrow, Hannah and I will be putting on the baseboards fixing the paint because we did cause a little bit more damage than we had originally intended. So that means time for this project to go into day three. Now we have the baseboards in. We did kind of just cut that out because we were over it. Anywho, baseboards are in and now it is time for the fun part that is decorating. Now the inspiration for this room comes from my dad. He's very weird. So this room it's gonna be a weird one, but in a good way. We don't have a lot of color in our house, so this room we wanna make kinda of like our colorful room. So we're gonna play off of this rug and get to decorating. I'm thinking desk there, and then a maybe a chair here, cause I wanna encourage us to use this room. I, I feel, yeah, I feel like we weren't using the room cause there was nowhere to sit. Definitely some plants. Yeah, we saved the Alex drawers, and let's bring those in now. Also, I'll leave a little bit of space so we can tuck up a card table. It's not that aesthetically pleasing, but it comes in handy. So we did pick up a tabletop at Ikea. It is exactly what I wanted actually, and we got it in the bump and ding section, so we got it for a little bit of a discount. It is slightly bowed, however, I think we can fix that by screwing the tabletop into the top of the Alex drawers, and that'll kind of help even it out. Next up, we are bringing in this funky chair that we got from the um, bump and ding section. There's a lot of chrome in our house. Big fan of chrome. I don't know what to do with my hands. This is the only plant that I can keep alive, okay? Let me have it. So I just so happened to have these blue prints. So I thought they'd tie in with the uh, rug and they're kind of, oh, they're kind of Arizona-y. I think they're fun. Definitely crooked. This is overkill, but it should do the work. Six dollars, three dollars a shelf from Ikea pretty good interim solution until David has time to make us a nice custom floating shelf. But for now, I'm happy with six bucks. The shelves are finally put up, which means it's time to style. And that's really just as simple as that. As you can see, we have some of Hannah's artwork, some of the art supplies that she needs that she can just really quickly grab. So it's a perfect solution and it looks pretty great. And really quickly before we move on, just some items in this area. We have random paint brushes, a little holder that I made for her a few months back, paint mixing supplies, gesso whenever she wants to start a new project, and of course a Bluetooth speaker so we could always fill this room with music. That is whenever I'm not in the room. She did go out and get some of these drawer organizers. So these will be handy since we have so many drawers. 
She does have all of her art supplies kind of just randomly scattered throughout here. So I'm gonna go ahead and organize that myself. Over here, I have my side. And over here we have our plants. Lots of plants. My grandma actually made this macrame plant holder. So shout out to grandma. Thank you very much. We absolutely love them. In there we have some of the uh, pothos, string of hearts, and the monstera plant. So like I said, we do have quite a few art supplies in these drawers. So I'm just gonna take everything out, see what we're working with, and hopefully get this all organized before Hannah gets home. Here's the brand that we got and it is expandable. That's cool, I didn't know that. You can put your items in there and there it is. So it expands sideways so you can see how big of a compartment you actually need. That will fit perfectly. We could either have it, hmm. Still closes like that. That's actually pretty smart. I think I might do that. So I will probably have one that fits perfectly down in there. And then the other one stretched out and it can go on top. So this will be perfect. Let's see how it goes. I'm sorry, members of the art community, if this is taboo to bend your paint, but that's how it's fitting into this divider. So before everything was in these bins right here, just scattered around and thrown in the drawers, everything is much nicer. You have all of our paints up in this section. If you wanted to grab those really quickly, you can just grab the whole tray and bring it on out and you have access to everything underneath as well. So this really tidied everything up, makes it look great. If you didn't want to see that, just push it to the back and you can have more access to the things underneath. Perfect solution. We also did it to a couple other drawers. So this is more stationary. Hannah's sloth coloring book because she loves sloths. We have a few more that are left over. But other than that, I think we're done. Well, that's all that we have for you in this week's video. Thank you for tuning in. As always, make sure that you like and subscribe. That way YouTube knows that you think we're cool and they should too. And if you're interested in seeing what a secret movie projector shelf looks like, click this video up here. If you're into a different sort of thing, click this video down here. YouTube thinks you'll like that one the most. We'll see you next time.